Hello, good evening. Good evening, teacher. How are you? Good evening. Fine, and you? Very nice. Good. So we are starting session number two of the week number one of this new course. Uh, we are going to wait for the others to join, but we are going to talk about um, the things that we were learning yesterday, and we were talking about passive voice, uh, using by at the end, and now we are going to end that part because um, yesterday I said that I like it to have the two topics uh, together, that is the passive voice with by and the passive voice without by in the same, um, I mean, in order. First, I want to have a passive voice with by, and next, I am wanted to have a passive voice without by to continue with the other topics that we have in the platform. So now we are going to continue learning about passive voice. We are going to talk about examples, how to construct the times and how to use tenses with passive voice. And also we are going to have like um, something specific to remember the most important information that we have about passive voice and how to construct those kind of sentences to continue with the other topics that we are going to develop um, based on the platform that we have. Because we know that we have some extra exercises there. So in that case, we are going to use the information to complete the uh, sentences or the exercises. So now we are going to continue and we are going to see the passive boy without by. Because yesterday we were saying that uh, the use of, of by is more than, it's like depending on the speaker that wants to say something uh, about the person that is doing the action, but in I am starting thinking that my computer uh, is tired because in the first session, uh, he, she's doing the same thing again. She is uh, taking me off of the, of the meeting. And I think that is not the problem of the internet, it is the problem of my computer, I think. Because she's not working well right now. That we are going to have the whole session. So she needs to work well. So I was saying that we were learning yesterday that this kind of uh, information that we can add at the end of the sentence, when we have our passive voice, it's like a question, I mean, a, a situation in which we are going to decide if we want to uh, use that information with the sentences or not. So in that case, if we don't want to add the by phrases, it's, it's not going to happen anything bad with the sentence. In that case, it's depending on uh, the situation that we are talking, um, in which we are going to use that a structure. So if you want to use the by phrases, you can use it because in that case, you are going to add more information to the sentence. But if you don't want to use the by phrases, that's okay. It's your decision. Because in that case, it's uh, talking about the English uh, speakers that uh, decide to uh, have that kind of uh, sentences because they like to show um, the old information and the new information in a specific order, and that's okay. They, it's something that they prefer. So we were saying some examples in which we have how to construct the passive voice uh, and the active voice. And also we were saying that it's more common or it's most common to use the active voice because it's 
easier to give the information that we are using at the active voice, but it also uh, happens to have the passive voice in that case, and we can use both of them. So now we are going to see the whole information about the passive voice in this case without by, and we have in general, we tend to use the active voice that is when the subject does an action to the object. And in this case, we are going to write some examples to see the difference between the active and the passive voice. Vamos a ir trabajando esta parte del passive voice ya como parte final del tema con un par de ejemplos para que nos vaya quedando más claro cómo es que construimos el passive voice y el active voice Y también vamos a ver eh, cómo construirlo dependiendo del de tiempo presente, pasado, futuro y todo eso. So, we are going to see the difference between active and passive voice with examples. So, in this case, we are going to have a passive voice. And we have the first example. And in this case, I'm going to write active voice. And we have the example and it says, somebody stole my laptop. That is the sentence, very, very simple. Somebody stole my laptop. In that case, we don't have an, an a specific subject for the sentence, somebody who, we don't know uh, who is the person that is for the, um, the laptop, but we know that someone do that action. And it says somebody stole my laptop. And we are going to have like this. We have the first thing that is the subject, that is somebody, the word somebody. Then we have, the action, we are going to, to have it like this, because it's going to be very confusing. Then we have the action, that is the verb. In this case, is a stall. And the last part of the sentence is the object. That is my laptop. So we can divide the sentence in three parts, subject, action, and object. In este caso, la, el sujeto hace la acción que afecta al objeto. Simple. En esa parte está claro. Then, the passive boy is used when we want to emphasize the action, and in, in this case, the verb and the object of a sentence rather than the subject. This means that the subject is either less important than the action itself, or that we don't know who or what the subject is. So in that case, we want to emphasize what happened. What is the action that affects the object? In this case, it's very important because it's our laptop. And we want to emphasize that something happened to the laptop. So in that case, we are going to change the subject for the object. And we have my laptop was stolen. And that's the sentence. My laptop was stolen. And in that case, we are going to divide the sentence. The object. Now, the subject, we are going to see like this because it's the order of the sentence. Is the word or the phrase my laptop. Then it says the action. And we're going to write what is stolen. And we have just so far, in that case, the uh, object is being affected by the action that someone performed. 
So in that case, we have two parts in that sentence. So my laptop was stolen. The object is now the subject because it's in the first part. Así construimos la voz pasiva y la voz activa. Ya sabemos que la voz activa es cuando el sujeto hace la acción y en muchos de los casos sí tenemos conocimiento de quién lo hizo. Pero en la voz pasiva queremos darle énfasis a la acción de que algo pasó, que algo ocurrió y en muchos de los casos no sabemos o no queremos incluir quién hizo esa acción. Let's see another example. We're going to see again one that is the. In this case, we're going to have active. Let's see. Mm -hmm. This is the active, and we are going to write in the parentheses many people. I mean, okay. Known, Napapali, for its excellent wine. So in this case, many people know Napapali for its excellent wine. Muchas personas conocen el Valle Napa o el Napa Valley por sus ex, eh, vinos excelentes. That is the sentence. And in the passive, we are going to construct it like this. In this case, our subject is not the, the word wine. Nuestro, sujeto, nuestro objeto, I mean, no, no es el vino. What is the object of this sentence? Napa Bailey. Good, Napa Bailey. That is the object. Napa Bailey is known, in this case, is known for its excellent wine. And in this case, we are not adding many people because in that case, we can know that a lot of people have uh, say something about the wine. And in that case, it's not necessary to add the information, but if you want to write it, you can say Napa Bailey is known for its excellent wines by many people, maybe. But in that case, it is not necessary because we uh, can imagine that a lot of people have uh, talking about the wines that we can find in Napa Bailey. Then we have another example. Again, number one for the active. I don't want a number three. I mean, okay. And we have active. It says someone kill. Twenty civilians in the bomb explosion. That is the active uh, sentence. Now we are going to transform into passive, and it says. In this case, the object of this sentence is 20 civilians. 20. What happened with uh, them? Were killed in the bomb explosion. In those cases, uh, we don't have the information. And in this case, we can use the, the by phrases because um, it's something that happened and we don't have the whole information about who is the person that performed that action. So in that case, we have the 
all information at the beginning of the sentence, because we were saying that 20 civilians were killed in the bomb explosion. And when we have the information, because uh, we were talking with the police, we have some uh, videos, we have some information, we can add at the end of the sentence and we can add the by phrases. 20 civilians were killed uh, in the bomb explosion by someone that is part of a specific group. So in that case, we can have that kind of sentences in which we have all information and new information and we can use the by phrases. Then it says that we have the passive agent that when we know who the subject is, we put it at the end with by. That is the thing that we were learning uh, yesterday with the by phrases. And we call it an agent. So in that case, when we have new information that we are adding at the end of the sentence, we can call it passive agent. And we are going to have some examples. So we are going to write here, passive agent, and it says, when we know who the subject is, we put at the end with by. And agent. We're going to write it like this because it's like an error for this kind of document. So we have the example. Mm -hmm. Example. And we have the active. And it says Leonardo da Vinci paints the Mona Lisa. Leonardo. Da Vinci painted the Mona Lisa. So in that case, we are going to write the passive. And it says, the Mona Lisa was painted And in that case, that is the, the, the sentence in, in passive, the Mona Lisa was painted. But at the end, we can add who is the person or who is the author for that situation. In that case, we are going to write by Leonardo da Vinci. And we are going to make it like Let me see like this. So in that case, we're adding the information at the end of the sentence. The agent is Leonardo da Vinci. That is the new information that we have about the action or the, um, we can say the object. Most writing instructors and editors recommend against using the passive voice when possible. The reason for this is that when you use the active voice, the writing is clearer and less complicated. In the case, when we are uh, writing something, we need to use all the tools that we have to make it interesting. And in the case that uh, someone is just writing with active voice, the, uh, the reading can be very, very, we can say kind of boring because it doesn't have like um, something different in the in the in the style. And in the case, you can use passive voice to make the uh, the reading more interesting. So in that case, many people recommend to use this kind of uh, structures to. Um, to keep the reader interested in the story. So, 
más que todo esto se hace para mantener, ¿verdad? Eh, el, el interés de la persona que lee, de la persona que escucha, en lo que estamos nosotros tratando de decir. Porque en muchos de los casos, si solo hablamos con voz pasiva, a I mí, mean, con voz activa, la persona sí se puede aburrir eh, de lo plano que puede llegar a ser. Pero si nosotros incluimos voz pasiva de vez en cuando, en puntos estratégicos, va a cambiar el flujo, ¿verdad? De el interés de la persona en lo que decimos y en lo que escribimos. So for that reason, we can use the passive voice in some situation or something uh, very specific to gain that attention for the person, uh, I mean, for the person that is listening or reading some information. So, if uh, we have a long sentence, I have me. a question. Tell me, tell me. Could we use uh, the passive voice, for example, is, I don't know if it's a, a, a good moment to include this. Uh, for example, uh, about the, the example, the, the Mona Lisa, right? Mm -hmm. So, you have a question, uh, who find a... Uh, uh, who painted the Mona Lisa, or I don't know, uh, or who did paint the Mona Lisa? So it, the correct form to answer that question is uh, with passive voice, or not is uh, only that correct? No, in that case, you can uh, answer the, those kind of questions using the passive, because it's, um, you are going to have the whole, the, the whole information at the beginning. And in that case, someone is asking for the author of the painting of the author of a book, you're going to maintain the, um, the interest of the people that is asking. And you are adding the old information first and the person is saying, ah, I know that information, but I need new information. And that person is uh, listening to the information that you are giving. So in that case, it's like, you are going to have a proof in your answer and you can use the passive to answer the question because you are keeping the information the new information or the most important information at the end and in that uh, case it's better because you're uh, having something like very interesting to say so in that case you can you can answer with a uh, passive voice but i'm saying again it depends on you. If you want to use the passive voice when asking something, when uh, answering something, when writing something, when saying something, it's okay. But if you feel better in this case, in, in this process, uh, just using active voice, that is very, very uh, simple, you can do it. Because it's uh, like a style. It's something that you need to um, find. For example, if you like to use both of them in, in your conversation, you are uh, using active voice and then you change it to passive and then again you uh, change to active and you have that uh, situation, it's perfect. But you need to find if you feel uh, comfortable with the passive or active voice. So, you can you can um, answer those kind of questions when you are um, you want to know some specific uh, information about situation. You can use the passive, and it's better. So then it says that when you have a long sentences and you know who the subject is, it's the best. Uh, or it's best to use the active voice. In this case, when we have long sentences uh, and you have information about the person that is doing the action, it's better to uh, use the active voice and not the passive. So in this case, we are going to see some example of long sentence in which we are going to use better the active voice and not the passive. For example, we have this one long sentences and we have here the active voice 
And it's a very, very long sentence. And it says, while Mr. Taylor I mean, in this case, it's not. This one is this one. While Mr. Taylor was driving down Highway 101, a police officer pulled him over and gave him a speeding ticket. So in that case, we, we have a, this a sentence that is very complete. While Mr. Taylor was driving down Highway 101, a police officer pulled him over and gave him a, 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 a speeding ticket. So in that case, we have a long sentence. And if we transform that sentence into passive, it, it will sound kind of weird. So it's very to use the active voice in that case. So it, it is like this. While Mr. Taylor was driving down a highway 101, he was pulled So it's not like very, very different, but they have some um, changes. In the first part, while Mr. Taylor was driving down Highway 101, that is the same. And then we say, he was pulled over and given a ticket by a police officer. And in the active voice, a police officer pulled him over and gave him a speeding ticket. It's just changing some details. But it's better to use the active voice because it's almost the same with a long, long sentence. So in that case, it's better to use active voice because you have the whole information in there and you are just going to write some difference in the, in the sentences. The passive is often used to report something to a state apart. In that case, uh, when we are talking about reported speech, it's when you hear something from someone and you say to another person. So in that case, you are just giving some specific information. So in that case, we are going to use the active for that situation. Cuando escuchamos algo de otra persona, en, en este caso es como eh, pasar la información um, hacia otra persona, pero no de la misma forma. Um, yo escucho el mensaje, yo lo paso como yo lo comprendí. That is the, the main thing of the reported speech or the reported idea, porque no vamos a, a, a dar exactamente como lo escuchamos, sino que vamos a procesar la información y lo vamos a dar a nuestra manera. So in that case, uh, we are going to use the passive, because we are going to change some details. For example, Highway 15 was closed yesterday due to a serious road accident. Maybe in that situation, someone said something different, but we can say that kind of sentences. And then the number two, a lot of corn is grown in Iowa. A lot of corn is grown in Iowa. So in that case, when we are saying the idea, we are using passive voice. So, how can we form passive voice? In that case, we're going to see how to create sentences with passive voice. Forming the passive voice. And it says, the passive voice is not a tense in English. It's 
Spence has its own passive boy, which is created by using a form of the auxiliary verb to be plus as participle. So that is the thing that we need to keep in mind. It is not a tense. Uh, the different tenses that we have in English, that is the passive, that is has um, a specific uh, situation, the present and the future has a different form of passive. But in this case, we're going to create a passive with the verb to be, in this case, is the auxiliary verb, and the past participle form of the verb. Lo vamos a crear con el, con el auxiliar del verbo to be y con el pasado participio. Así vamos a crear nuestra voz pasiva en los diferentes eh, tiempos que nosotros tenemos en inglés. So we are going to see. So here we have auxiliary verb V and a past participle. So we're going to see the tenses, um, the words that we're going to use, uh, the auxiliary verb or verb to be, and in the case of the past participle. And then we are going to see some examples of the construction of the sentence with uh, those elements. So we are going to insert this uh, table and we have three parts. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. Okay. Here. So we have here the first part, that is the 10 that we are going to use. Then, then we have auxiliary verb. Plus B3. That is the a past participle and then the example. Now we are going to see the tenses that we have here. Then the elements that we are going to use to create the passive voice. For the first sense, we have the present simple. Okay, I'm here again. Okay, we're going to continue. So. I was saying, we are going to begin with a simple present or present simple. But let me take this. Okay. Here we have present simple. What are the elements that we are going to use to create the passive? We are going to use the auxiliary verb. In this case, am, is, are. That are the uh, elements of the auxiliary verb B. And then, in this case, we are going to use made. That is the past participle of the verb made. And we have the example. Wine is made for, from grape. Wine. And then we are going to use the verb to be, in this case, for wine, that is an object. And it is um, 
third person singular, we are going to use is. Then we are going to use the verb. Is made and the complement from break. And we have the sentence. Then another one, many, many cars. In this case, we are using plural and we are going to use are. And the verb made in Japan. And we have the sentence. Wine is made from grapes, and then many cars are made in Japan. So in that case, we have the elements that we have there. Uh, in that case, we have a DLC labor in present, and the verb is in past participle to create the, the passive. Then we have another one, present progressive. For the present progressive, we have the same uh, auxiliary verb, um, is, are, plus being, in this case, being. We are going to add being to the structure plus the verb in past participle, sense. And we have the example. The document. is being in that case we are going to use it together is being sent right now está siendo enviado that is at the meaning está siendo enviado and another example i am being sent to work in the London office. Then we have past. We are going to talk about past. Past simple. In this case, we are going to change the auxiliary verb because in this case, we are going to use the verb to be in past. And we have was, where, plus the D3 or past participle of the verb. In this case, invited. In this case, it's a regular verb. And we have the example. John, and in this case, we're going to see some active uh, voice, I mean because we are constructing just the sentences. So, John was invited to speak at the conference. And then we were invited to Daniel and Mary's wedding. Then we have past progressive. And we have again, what and where, plus being again, plus the verb, and in this case, washing. And we have here, the dog was being washed, when I got home. And then the car were being washed while they were in the mall shopping.
Then we have future, in this case, with will. If you can see, we are not saying all the, the tenses because uh, for present, we have four, for past, we have four, and for future, we have four. In that case, we're just uh, seeing two of each of these uh, tenses. It will be very, very long if we have the, the complete uh, the table in this case. So future wheel. Here, we are going to change the verb to be. In this case, we're not going to have is, am, and are, or was and where. In this case, we are going to have will be. Will be plus the past participle of the verb. Sing next. And we have the example, the contract will be signed tomorrow and the other one, the document we all the signed by next week. Then we have future with going to, that is a difference because a future with will is something that is unfortunate and future with going to is something that we are very secure that is going to happen in, um, in the future, but no long, long future in this case. It's something that is going to happen in, in a short time. So future with going to. Again, the elements. In this case, we are going to use um, is and are. But we are going to use going to be. Plus the, um, the verb in a past participle will. And we have the example. A bridge. It's going to be built within the next two years. And the second one, new houses are going to be built in our neighborhood. Then we're going to see the um, present perfect, past perfect, and future perfect, in which we are going to um, know how to create also this kind of sentence. For the present perfect, we have, uh, in this case, we are not going to use the am, um, is, and are, neither was, and were. In this case, we are going to use has, have, and being, because there is the structure that we are using for the tenses. So in that case, we are not going to use the verb to be. In this case, have and have plus being plus the past participle of the verb, this case, form. And we have that startup. Has been sold. Four or five dollars 
I mean, 500, 5 million, I mean, I mean, 5 million. And the second one, the right, to this, to this book, have been sold for a lot of money. So in this case, we are not going to have the elements that we have for the present or the past. In that case, they are using its uh, own um, structure in which they are like having half and half, because in that case, we are not using the verb to be. Then we have the past perfect. And in this case, again, we are not going to use the verb to be. In this case, we are just use has. Had plus being plus hired. What is the past participle? And we have the example. The new manager had been hired before John left the company. The company. And then we have future perfect. In this case, we're going to use will plus have been plus the past participle finish. And we have the example. The car will have been loaded by the time he gets home. Or in this case, we're going to use finish. And we have three more to end the table. In this case, we're not using the, the tenses. In this case, we're going to use modal. We have a model can and cool, model have to, and model must. In that case, we are going to use the model to create this passive voice. So for the first model, can and cool, we obviously use can cool for the construction or the elements of the sentence. Plus, plus B, plus the past participle issue. And we have the example, a passport can only be issued at the embassy. I mean, double S. Then we have a model have to. Again, we are going to use have to or has to or has to plus B plus a participle arrange. And we have the example. A babysitter has to be arranged for evening. And the last one is model must.
Nas plus beam plus the top. Here we have the um, the example criminal must be a top. Before they commit crime. So in this case, we have a, this a table in which we have a, the tenses and a, the elements that we need a, to write or to use to create a, these a, passive a, sentences. Um, in this case, it's like, it can sound very confusing, but um, if we are studying the tenses, we know that they have a specific uh, structures in which we are going to use this kind of sentences. And if we know uh, what are the elements of the tense or the structure of the tense, it will be kind of easy to understand that is the same for the passive voice because we're using the same structure to create a passive voice with these um, a tenses or with the model. It, it can be like very complicated because it's a long, long topic um, and we need to keep practicing and reading information about the passive voice to um, get all the information that we need to know about the passive voice. But at the end, if you um, know how to create the sentences, it can be very simple. And it says that all of the rules for passive and negative and questions are the same as for the active voice. Verbs that have no object, no one to receive the action, cannot be put into the passive, such as arrive, come, die, exist, go, happen, have, leave, occur, escalate. So in that case, those verbs that doesn't have an object, uh, we cannot put into passive sentences. So we are going to, create a, to write some examples of those verbs that we are not going to use for the passive uh, voice because they they don't have uh, anybody that can receive the uh, the action. So let's see. Verbs that have no object and in this case is no one to receive the action cannot into the passive so the task. And we have a arrive, come, die, exist, go, happen, have. In this case, uh, you can say, but in the table we have have. Yes, we have that. A, that word, but in that case, is functioning as an auxiliary. So in that case, it's not the verb. It is not the main verb of the sentence. In that case, it's an auxiliary verb that is part of the structure. So in that case, we can use have in a passive voice, but not as a main verb of the sentence. It is just like part of the structure. So in that case, we can use have, but not for the main uh, the main verb of the sentence. Leave of cure is 
list. And there are so many more, so etc. So I am going to write some exercises that you are going to um so tomorrow. So you can write the sentences that I'm going to write because in that case we are going to find the um correct passive form of the verb. Vamos a encontrar la forma correcta del de verbo en forma pasiva. Yo voy a ir escribiendo en este momento los, eh, las oraciones y mañana vamos a darle respuesta a esas oraciones. So, let's see. Exercise. And I'm going to change the color. Number one. We have our bird discover. Then we have number two. And we have here the verb, take. Number three. And we have here the Expressor must protect. We have here the verb that is hotter. Number five, a castle. Yeah. In this number six, you are not going to, to have a make five. You need to, to write the correct form of the verb or the elements that you are going to use uh, to complete the sentence. But in that case, it's not that you are going to um, write make five in the correct form. Let's do something. I have three more sentences to write, but I am going to write it um, at the end of the session. Um, I will send the link right now to the group so you can have the access to 
the documents and you can read the sentences because tomorrow we are going to um, say the answer for this exercise. So I will send to you the link and you are going to have um, the 10 sentences in the document so you can read the sentence slowly and you can uh, search for the um, the answers uh, depending on the information that you have in the table. So I will send the document and we are going to see each other tomorrow and we are going to show this exercise. So we are going to see each other tomorrow. Have a really good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, good night teacher. Good night. I see you.